Remember, the law is contract, and contract is the law. Also, Sam, they, they must rebut point for point. That's right. They can't leave anything out. They must rebut point by point, and they have to do so with the same particularity that you did. And then you have a controversy, and then we're going to go to the proofs. So whatever they allege, now they have to bring forward, and they have to bring it forward first. Okay? That's what we did with Travis. And you note the following week, case dismissed. Okay? Now, that's what I did in the foreclosure with my friends. Now, I did it way after the fact, after they had already lost in court. And we went in on appeal. And what we said on appeal was, you don't exist. Must have worked. Still haven't made a decision. It's been since uh, July, the end of July of last year. Still no decision. Throughout this process, if they were to come back, if they were to do, keep right on coming, that's when I would bring in the UCC process and they accepted for value. Hey, if I can kill it over here with two pieces of paper, why do I want to cut down half a forest to go through the accepted for value process? Okay? I'm an environmentalist. <laughs> My motto is, Earth first, we'll log the other planets later. <laughs> I'm from Idaho, you know. Okay. The, my point is this, is that when they keep coming, they're saying by de facto method that they exist and so does this entity. So I then have no choice but to agree with my adversary quickly while I'm on my way to court with him before he turns me over to the judge. And the judge turns me over to the officers and the officers cast me into the prison. Because the scripture says that I'll not get out of there till I've paid my last penny. And that's pretty true. Okay? That's pretty true. It costs me $400 to get out of there. It costs me a night in jail and two years probation. Okay? Now, Travis and his wife got extradited back to Texas and no matter what we did, they didn't get out. They, they ended up being in jail for a total of uh, seven and a half months. And the prosecutors and attorneys that, uh, there was a couple things that they didn't do right, but I haven't examined all the paperwork yet to tell you what it is. But I know that they, they put the two attorneys on them, and no matter what they did, they weren't going to have any part of it. They rolled right over them. And, and that's what you have to watch out for. And that's our concern. Uh, I have two other friends in Ohio that they've been doing the same thing to now for five weeks. Uh, although we're getting closer and I think we're going to prevail. So the, uh, for every one or two people that are successful, it depends on how bad they want you as to what they're going to do. Okay, so when they keep coming, we then take the position of accepting it for value and entering it on the UCC, and, and then, we, then we go about putting public policy on them. Okay, um, uh, when, when we go through that process of registration uh, and dealing with these presentments in the UCC, there's a, a specific way that, that we go about or I go about doing it. And, and one of those ways just depends on where I get a case. Um, you have to understand that when a case is already down the road, you have to tackle it a little bit differently than when you're just starting out. Those are things that we look at on an individual type basis 
and try and determine uh, how we're going to attack it. All right. The UCC is a kind of a organized method of dealing with all kinds of commercial transactions. But the other thing it is, is it actually controls all the other laws because of public policy in HDR 192. Now, we're taught from the youngest age that this is a dollar. And yet we have a document in front of us from the Department of Treasury that says it's not a dollar. Okay? So, going back to a court, a court session or a court proceeding where uh, a judge says, um, uh, or orders you into an order to show cause, and orders you to give your financial uh, information uh, for another party in order to determine your ability to pay, you're going to have to go and fill out a form of some sort or another. And in questioning you, um, you're, you, know, you have the option to volunteer all the information you want. One of the things that we're looking at is a comment that is made that says, I have no money. And when you say that, then the judge is going to question you to determine whether or not you have money or not. And the first thing he's going to ask is, Mr. Davis, do you have a job? Are you employed? No, Your Honor, I'm not employed. How do you pay your rent? I find a way. Okay? Well, some people are going to say, well, yes, I have a job. Well, how much do you get paid? Now, if you say, I make $7 an hour, he's going to find a way to get you to give up some of that $7 an hour to whoever is coming against you. That's his job. What you have to understand is he's asking you to make a legal determination as to your income. I want you to think for a moment about accountants, attorneys, and doctors, and anyone else that practices their profession. I don't want anybody practicing on me. Why do I want to go to a doctor that's going to practice on me? Why do I want to go to an attorney who for 30 years has been practicing? Man, I need the real thing. Right? All of these people are licensed. You know what that means? They're licensed to make a legal determination as to your situation. Okay? Now, a legal determination, when the judge says, what is your name? Uh, well, Your Honor, I can't make a legal determination. <coughs> you mean you don't know your own name? I know my name. Well, what's your name? Well, I can't make a legal determination. What on earth do you mean? Why won't you give me your name? Well, Your Honor, I don't know if you're talking to the creditor or the debtor. Are you talking to the straw man or the real man? I can't make a legal determination. Now what's he going to do? I don't know either. It varies. Yeah. Okay? It varies as to what his response is going to be. When an accountant fills out your taxes and puts his name on it, he has made a legal determination as to how much you owe. And you have to countersign and say, okay. That's what you're asking him to do, and you're paying him to do it. When you go to the doctor, you're asking him to make a legal determination as to what ails you. And he's licensed to do that. And if he misdiagnoses, he has malpractice insurance. 
Okay? Think about the words there. Do you want somebody practicing on you? Just because they have a piece of paper that says they went through this educational process? You know the best education in the world is go out and do it. That's why I encourage everybody to go to jail once. And everybody says, no, I'll you can leave me out of that one. <laughs> I don't blame you. Somebody said, what kind of food do you get? You can be a vegetarian in there and they'll honor that. 